the multi-step concept redesign. So here's the issue. If there's a complicated concept or if it's really multi-step, it can be more challenging to master. And we tend to know what those things are because they don't do as well on the test. They don't do as well on the test from these things. Um, so students with disabilities will tend to find them the hardest, especially if it's a learning disability. Sometimes a student with a learning disability cannot make it through all the steps, and they need some guidance to get through. Um, I don't always give alternative methods for learning these concepts, because frankly, a lot of things in biology are complex, multi-step, abstract concepts. In the past, I always expect students to figure out their own approaches, and they rarely do. Um, one of my goals is if there's something that's challenging that I could give step by step, and sometimes it's hard for me to know what those are, but if there is something that I can figure out that is a step by step thing, I can give them a guide. Um, it could be a worksheet. It could be just a simple handout. This is what it is. It could even be something that they develop together, and I can explain that after I show you mine. Um, they can do these things alone. They can do them in groups. They can do them at home. You could even just do concept maps yeah. for them. Um, so here's just an example. I had one of our difficult topics in, in biology is transport, how things get across the membrane. And I thought I had taken this really difficult concept and made it pretty simple by just setting up four questions. Um, and if they can answer each question, they'd be able to get through it. But when I set it up as four questions and there's all this text here, Too many words, it's, I know. So. What I did instead was I turned it into this. There are five methods I want them to focus on. Here are the four questions. They have to, for each thing that might cross the membrane, they have to read the question, say yes or no, and then follow the arrow. So this is just the plan for it. And then there's an application for it where I give them a cell and I show them all the things that could cross. And for each one of these things, they have to read those questions and figure out which of the five ways it moves across. And I list the five ways, although it's small here. Um, and then they just put the number on the arrow. And they have a hard time with this because they don't know which arrows to number, if they number everyone. If when they go in opposite directions, they each have to be numbered. But you eventually can work it through with them. Um, and if they can do this, they tend to do much better on transport. It's now giving them a practical application on top of it. So the concept map plus a practical application. So visual learners would understand this better. Um, Students with dis with I'm trying to do beyond like learning disabilities. Uh, applications are provided that helps a lot of students, especially if the topic is really abstract. Um, and again, somebody who has a visual impairment can't necessarily use this worksheet as it is, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that they can't use it with somebody else and work through it. So there's there might still need to be accommodations. So. Uh, I wanted to just point out some assessment kinds of things that are not UDL. Um, students with learning disabilities, you give them one of those questions uh, that's a multiple choice where your answer is A, B, C, A, and B, or all of the above. And then they get confused because all of the above is A and B, but it's also A and B and C. And then they just, it's not that they can't think about what's right, it's that now they have to hold on to, okay, this is right and this is right, and it's too many things. Okay, they also have a hard time with which are not one of these, oh, the negatives. Right. Um, the ones with many thought steps like that example I gave you before. Uh, if you can, so if you could lead them. Some, some easy fixes that I've done um, is, the first thing is this scrap paper idea. So I always tell them when you walk in, first thing you should do is write down what you know on a piece of paper. Once you've got that, what you know, you can just refer to it and you won't get anything wrong because you've already got it written down. So now nothing else will confuse it, nothing else will wind up inside your list that shouldn't be there. And the students that do that usually get a grade higher on every test. Some other little things are to provide those uh, thought steps for them. And the other thing that I do is if I do something in class, if I give them an activity to learn something, if I use the cell models, if I use whatever it is that I use in class, whether it's Mimeo or whatever, I use those on the test too because they have experience with it. Applications and analogies. Um, biology is very abstract, a lot of what we teach. 
you know, maybe it's a little bit easier in environmental biology for some of it because it's stuff you actually touch. Uh, you'd think anatomy and physiology is pretty, uh, it doesn't necessarily be, have to be so abstract, but in fact, we spend most of the time inside of a cell in anatomy and physiology. Um, so the things that they ha don't have a problem with are memorizing bones, but they do have a problem knowing why bones have the structure they have. So all that abstract stuff, they, they struggle with it. Um, and when you have an abstract su subject, if you can give them an application or an analogy, one or the other, it's helpful. So um, computer stuff. The computer stuff is very often universal design for learning. Not always, OK? Because um, computer content is usually accessible, and it's something that students can work on on their own. So you give them time, whatever they need. They have whatever environment they need. So it's very user friendly. But there are a lot of, of versions that are not accessible, a lot of items. Um, there are, there are um, screen readers that can be used for some students. And it's not just visual impaired, uh, students with visual disabilities. It's also somebody with a learning disability or a language disability to listen to the words. Um, now, there's some material that's got limits on accessibility, like flash videos. Yeah. Um, you can't do anything with them but listen, or videos that don't have um, closed captioning underneath can be very challenging for some people to to deal with. A regular HTML page is super user friendly, right? A Word document user friendly. PDFs there can be trouble with for screen readers. There are some challenges with it, but um, for the most part, it's very handy. And so Blackboard. You know, using Blackboard, using all the tools there, using the calendar and keeping them on target. Those kinds of things are very, very helpful, and they're universal design for learning. So I do know that my students have benefited, all of them, not just the ones that I've targeted the work for. Um, my classes, my students seem to find it more engaging. At least I get less problems, so if that reflects more engaging, because I can't really speak for the students. Um, they actually think that I'm more caring now than I was. Um, so they, get, they take responsibility for their learning. And there are some good websites. CAST has a website that actually has a little tutorial. You can go through a training yourself. And they have videos in it. They're all closed captioned. And they have lots of little things for you to do if you want to go through their training. And this, at Washington, University of Washington, they have this site, Do It, that's from Access STEM. And Access STEM is funded by the same program that's funding Chris on this grant, and also me on one of mine, the Research and Disability Education Grant. Access STEM is a, um, but it's the big center. It's like one of the big grants, right? So it's all of the Northwest. It's an alliance. So they used to call them centers. It's an alliance. So, <laughs> so we're this, they're that, all right? So anyway, they have a whole bunch of things on the UW site, and um, that could be helpful. So that's all. Thank you.